All right, question came up today. Uh, someone asked me on one of the Triumph groups <clears throat> how to um, how to use Tune ECU to tune the new 2020 um, Street Triple RS and and stuff like that. So um, what you got to do is not you can use an Android phone. Um, I found it was easier to make this video, and I actually like working in this. This is called Blue Stacks. It's an Android emulator. So it lets you run it within a Windows shell. So that way I can use this on a 42-inch 4K monitor with a mouse and keyboard. Makes it a lot easier than trying to do it on my phone, which is actually being used to uh, do this recording here. So um, I installed uh, BlueStacks. Um, it basically just emulates a phone. You can go in and install whatever apps you want and stuff like that. One of those apps you need to download and pay for is Tune ECU. It's like 10 or 15 bucks. You need the Bluetooth connector. I'm not gonna provide all that information because you can get all that from Tune ECU's site. It'll show you which ones you need. Um, but what you can do is launch it here and it, it works exactly the same way. It thinks I'm in Android, so I can go ahead and do that. So what you would do is open up Android, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tune ECU, go and open up the map. So the map I want is 301044. That is the base map um, that again, you can get from Tune ECU for the 2020 Street Triple RS. Um, and this is your base map. So what you can do is I'm right now down here on F1. That's fuel table one, that's for cylinder one. If I scroll down with my mouse, or if you were to swipe with a finger, if you're on your phone or an Android tablet, um, you would then go to fuel tab uh, table two, Oop, went down, fuel table three, um, L, I don't remember what L is for to be honest. I'll have to look that up, but you don't need it here. Um, I is for ignition. So there's your ignition table for first gear, which seems to be the same for the other gear. Some bikes used to be a good tweak to do was um, like on my Daytona 675, the ignition advance had a little more ignition advance in gears three through six. So I would copy those tables down to first gear and just get a little more snap on the top end there. Um, but this is your ignition for second gear, third through six in neutral etv one is your um fuel uh, not your fuel your throttle tables so when you have a throttle by wire you twist the throttle so if i go in and twist the throttle to 100 percent based on the rpms here based on the th what it senses the ecu says well this is how much i'm going to give you and so in rain mode the motor isn't really start to make any significant power until you get up here eight nine thousand rpms so down low if you give it a hundred percent it will granted you're also going to have maximum traction control in there but when they say you know it reduces power in rain mode it does that two ways one is by using more traction control which will cut power if it senses wheel slip which is more likely to happen in the rain or some kind of sketchy surface and then also by cutting the actual throttle. So you'll notice the throttle table says, I'm gonna give you 100% up to this, and I'm gonna back it down to 86, to 78, to 71, to 68, to 65, down to hovering around 60. So when they say, you know, uh, it limits the horsepower, you know, to around 100 horsepower or something like that um, in rain mode, that's how it does it. You may twist the throttle to 100%, but when you get to a certain RPM, ECU is gonna say, no, I'm gonna close the butterflies and I'm gonna pull back fuel. I'm only gonna give you this much. So that's what happens there. I don't see any point in changing this. You want rain mode. It is good if you get stuck out. ETV2 is sport mode. And then the most aggressive here is your, I'm sorry, road mode is ETV2. Sport mode is ETV3. There is no track mode on the 2020. Um, there's a track mode you can put the motor in, but there's only three engine modes, engine map modes, and that's uh, rain, street, and sport. And then after that, you've got your air fuel targets. So here's what I did very quickly, and I don't know what that is, I don't use that one. So when you wanna tune it, there's a couple things I would do first. Um, the first thing I did was, you know, there's the closed loop and the open loop section of your uh, fuel. Um, and so on those tables, you're only gonna get the ability to tune from roughly 20% throttle up and above, I think it's 5,500 or 6,000 RPMs. This range down in here, this kind of stays where it's at. That's where they do all the EPA or the Euro 5 testing and stuff like that. And the O2 sensor is sampling. And if it thinks it's gotten too rich and it's making it out of compliance, it will do some small adjustments. It's not a self-tuning bike. People always say, oh, I'm going to do the 12-minute tune. I'm going to tune the bike. You're not really. You're just resetting some basic adaptives. The ECU has a very small window that it can operate within to make fuel adjustments to help try and keep it compliant for small changes in elevation, um, temperature, you know, things like that. 
So you really can't tune down here yet because there's no way to disable the O2 sensors. Now there are some things you can do. If you go up to map and hit parameters, one of the things you can do is raise the rev limiter from 12,500 to 12,800. Give yourself a couple extra revs there. Now normally there's a button here called devices and when you click on that it opens up a separate window and it would have your O2 sensor and your SAI which is your secondary air injection mod, mod, um, solenoid and there would be a checkbox. You could disable those and if you could disable those then you can pull out the uh, O2 sensor and then it doesn't matter what's in here. The ECU would not sense anything. It wouldn't make any change and then you could come up to the fuel tables and you could tune this whole thing and dial that thing in perfect on a, on a dyno. Problem is, they haven't gotten that far. I'm hoping that option comes soon, but this base map file, they didn't think they were gonna be able to get on these new Euro 5 ECUs, and I'd all but given up, and then one day it just popped up, <laughs> like last week, I think the 17th or something. So the one thing I did was bump up the rev limit just a little bit up to uh, 12,800, and then in here, knowing I can't really tune it, but I figured, well, maybe I can make it a little bit better, I went up to map, sorry, to table, Click on Modify. This is now open for editing, and that's why this is flashing around here. And I picked one of these cells that said 13.75, and I copied that. And then what I did was I went into all these other areas where it's like really, you know, high, highlighted the whole thing, and just pasted in that slightly richer value. And I do the same thing over here to these sections, highlight it, paste. Uh, we'll do that over on this section. And so the bike is not going to like, you know, magically retune itself, but at least, and then hit the checkbox to commit those changes, at least it, it, if it's trying to make any changes, at least it's trying to make them in the direction of richening things up a little bit, which if you put on a high flow air filter, maybe a freer flowing uh, uh, muffler, uh, you know, that gets rid of the secondary cat. At least if it's going to try to correct, it's going to try to correct it in the direction I want it to go. Now, whether that's going to be enough um, I need to go in and change those tables right here. We want to change those to, there we go. So that's what I did there. Figuring it can't hurt. Don't know how much it's going to help. But anyway, when you want to actually tune the bike, what you got to do is you got to go all the way up to the top. Scroll up. And then you want to swipe left or swipe it to the right so that you get to the left. These are your trim tables. This is saying that it. this is going to be like a power commander. This is going to tell you, okay, at this RPM, at this throttle position, how much fuel do you want to add? Want to add 5%, subtract 3%, what have you. And that's what a dyno operator will do is throw it on the dyno and they'll do some slow sweeps through the rev range. They'll hold it at, you know, 5% throttle, start it at, you know, down around idle and it'll pull through the gear and they'll take samples from the gas analyzer that they stick down the exhaust pipe or plug into an O2 bung or something like that. And that'll give an experienced dyno operator an idea of, okay, it's, it's rich here. I want to take out this much fuel, add in that much. Power command mate does make it a little bit easier. And that's one of the big differences here. Here, you don't have to have $350 for a power commander. You don't have to go through and unplug things and, you know, and, and try to install that. You're going to access the ECU directly, um, which could maybe help you in a warranty issue because unless someone knows to come in and look at this, they're going to see, no matter what you do here, it's still going to see 31044, which is the Triumph um, model. It's going to be the, the, the base map for that. It's correct map. You're just altering that map and resending it to the ECU. Um, the power commander, it has auto, uh, it has a, when it does a sweep, it knows and makes pre, like 95% accurate guesses at what those trim tables should be. And it applies them instantly. You, you accept them and it goes boom, and sends it. And then you run the sweep again and you resample until you dial it in perfect. Here, you have to do all these basically taking good estimate, you know, educated guesses, which if you have a tuner that's used to using this and been doing this a while, they'll be, they'll be, again, they'll get you in that 95%. The problem then is you have to take all these values, whatever you put in, so you do all your sweeps, you make your best ju judgment, uh, your tuner makes a judgment on what these values should be. You go over to here and you make sure that that box is checked, F trim global. And what you wanna do is then apply F trims. Now right now there's it's grayed out because I haven't made any changes. But if I wanted to, I just go to table again, modify, and I could come in and click on a cell and put in 5%, put in 10%, put, you know, in other areas it's gonna be subtracting fuel. Don't think that just because you put on a high flow pipe, even a full exhaust, that it's going to be adding fuel everywhere. There are, 
there's a lot more going on than just flow. There's harmonics. There's all kinds of stuff going on. You might find that there are areas that are rich and there's some that are crazy lean. I had that happen on a street cut. Um, went to a, a performance cam, opened up the air box, high flow filter, X pipe, gutted and rebaffled the mufflers and radically changed, you know, the engine there. And down low, it was like an air fuel ratio of like 10.5. I'm surprised it wasn't fouling plugs. And then up top, it was like 15. So it goes both ways. And you can go in just by making a change here. I can click on that and then swipe up, swipe down, type in a number, you know, things like that. I don't want to commit any changes, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. So once I make all my changes here, that would allow me to then come in and then say, apply those trims. What that would do is then cancel all these out. And if I swipe back here, it would take all those trim values and add 5%, add 10%, minus 3%. Whatever trim values I put, it would do that. And because I had F trim global, it will do it to all three cylinders. Now, if you want to get really fancy and you want to go in and do bi-cylinder tuning, and to be honest, I think probably maybe if you're racing and you wanted that, that motor making every last shred of horsepower, because maybe that makes a difference of am I third on the podium or second? You can do that here if you want. I don't think you need to for the street. Most people that just do track days, you know, your bike came from the factory with all three maps at the same. You know, that's the way they would ship and there's nothing wrong with it. So you could do it the same way. So you just go over here, make those changes, map, apply trims. And then what you're going to do from there is you can kind of take over from my other video if you search on my channel to where I show you how you connect it through Bluetooth and then you go and actually push the map to the bike and stuff like that. If you want here, you can, uh, we showed, talked about parameters and changing the RPM level, uh, red line. You can go into information here and hit edit and then you can actually go in and make your changes. And So if someone opens up this map, they'll know, oh, this is the map, this is what you did, if you had velocity stacks or not. You know, just something to help someone if you're going to share the map with them so they make sure that this is as you know pretty close to what their configuration is. I know that the school of thought is well, you know, every bike's different, you gotta have it mapped for your bike. And there's some truth to that if you want it to be perfectly optimal. But there's a base map that they put in every single bike. If every bike's different, well, the map you're getting from the factory is all the same. It's not like they take every Triumph or every Honda or every Ducati and they throw it on the dyno and custom tune it before it leaves the factory. They take a baseline map that is 95% and it's going to be fine um, for use. There's always room for improvement. It's not going to be dangerously lean or dangerously rich so long as the mods are roughly the same, you know. Um, that at least has been my experience. So, um, And it makes sense to me logically, so... Anyway, that's how you would use that. That's how you would tune that. These are your fuel tables. Go over here, make your trims based on your dyno readings. Go ahead and apply those trims. And then what you want to do is go ahead and save your map, give it a new name so you know what it is. And then take your uh, Android device, connect it via Bluetooth to your bike and follow the instructions in my other video on how to go in and flash that. It takes about 20 minutes. And that's the difference between the Power Commander. You pay more money but it's a much faster, easier way to tune. Some people are like, ah, the best way to do it is not piggyback systems. They both have advantages. You can, you can do a full custom, even by cylinder, completely map that bike in like half an hour. Well, that doesn't happen here. You gotta do all your sweeps, and then you gotta decide, well, do I do all my sweeps, get all my values, get all my trims where I think they should be, then I have to spend 15 to 18 minutes pushing that to the bike. It's a slow process. Then I have to reset the bike, reset the adaptives, and then I've got to rerun everything again and see if there's more adjustments that have to be made. And if so, come back to the trim tables, make the new values, save them, then push them to the bike for 15 to 18 minutes again. That process can get long. It's not hard, it's just kind of tedious. Whereas the, the Power Commander software kind of just does it for you, sends it instantly. As soon as you hit accept, those values are in the Power Commander. You can do a sweep to test and go, yep, that's perfect. Move on to the next range. So that is how you do it. You got any questions, let me know. But it's pretty straightforward.